So, you're looking to build an Evelyn the Covetous Commander deck, but you're not quite sure where to start? Well, I'm here to help. My name is Capital G, and welcome to the first 10. Evelyn the Covetous, uh, she wants to steal cards from our opponent's deck, which is awesome. So, we're going to look at our first 10 picks, or at least my first 10 picks for Evelyn. And focus in on a strategy that will help us take full advantage of the value that she can get us. Uh, she herself, two generic, a black mana, a choice of black or red mana, and our choice of black or blue mana. For a 2-5 vampire rogue with flash, keep the flash in mind. And whenever this or another vampire enters the battlefield under our control, exile the top card of each player's library with a collection counter on it. So once each turn, we can play a card from exile with a collection counter on it, if it was exiled by an ability we controlled. We can spend mana as though or any color to cast it. Pretty sweet. So, yeah, that's the game plan, is exile cards from our opponent. Uh, but how heavy do you go on vampires? Well, I would say maybe 15. We want to have a good number of cheap vampires, but we also want to have a lot of instants on our deck. We don't want to rely on our opponents having instant speed stuff. I want to be running a lot of instants in this deck. So um, what do I mean? Uh, let's go into it, shall we? Um, even though I'm only showcasing two instants, the idea here is that we want to be able to interact with our opponents with our cards and take advantage of the ones we're getting from them on, say, our turn. So a thing like Malakir Rebirth or a thing like Teferi's Time Twist just to you know respond to any spells our opponents do get to cast against us typically removal or if they're coming in on a big attack we want to be able to respond to that and keep our board safe um, run counter magic instant speed removal uh, these are just two great examples of cards you should be running in Avalon. Um, obviously we want to run vampires i'm saying 10 to 15 range and we want them cheap so I've got Malakir Blood Priest as my highlight because not only is it cheap, but it you know gains us some life and lowers our opponent's life total a little bit. Um, but of course, Vampire Creature cards are not the only way to do that. Let's look at Maskwood Nexus. It's four mana for this artifact. Uh, creatures you control are every creature type, including Vampire. The same is true for creature spells you control, which is true of any creature spell we cast regardless of who owns the card, and any creature cards we own that aren't on the battlefield. So yeah, uh, all of a sudden everything's a vampire, even our opponent's creatures, so uh, we can go nuts with that. Also the fact that this can, you know, just give us a vampire, 3 tap create a 2-2 two, two blue shapeshifter that just happens to be a vampire, um, yes instant speed just getting more cards off of our opponents uh, other creatures we want to look at in our deck by the way even though they're not vampires uh, Nyad of the Hidden Coves as long as it's not your turn spells you cast cost one generic less um, yes please ideally uh, we want to be able to cast our spells on our turn and the cheaper they are the better uh, wave break hippocamp is a great way to get more value just draw more cards into our hand so because um, cards that are exiled with Evelyn are face up they're public knowledge the stuff in our hand not so much and that's how that's why we want to have more cards in our hand this will help us get there and of course prosper no you can't play this at instant speed but anytime you play a card from exile and this deck wants to play a lot of cards from exile we get a treasure that's exactly what the doctor ordered um, three more artifacts I want to talk about. Uh, these are great tools for us to use. Uh, let's start with Erratic Portal. Um, one tap return target creature to its owner's hand unless its controller pays one. I mean, yes, we could use this to mess up our opponent's tempo a little bit, but it's really for us to use on our own cards. Because that way we can bring Evelyn or one of our other vampires back to our hand, recast it, and get more value, such as the plan. Top! I don't mention Sensei's Divining Top. I'm not a huge fan of the card in general, uh, but it did just get uh, put onto the list. People are pulling these from New Capenna set boosters. Uh, the list, by the way, has been pretty sick for New Capenna. Um, I myself don't have one of these, 
but this is where it would go um, because this way I can control exactly uh, what is on top of my library. I can even put top on top of my library just by tapping it and being able to cast back that one mana and have full control over what's in my hand keep my secrets to myself. So lots of great usage for Sensei's Divining Top in this deck. And because we want uh, we want the manas, Victory Chimes is a, a great mana rock here. Yes, it's a three mana mana rock, not super popular for that reason, but it untaps during each other player's untap step. So the more instants we have access to, the more value we get from this. That's why our deck should focus more on the instants and whatever instant speech and items we get from our opponents just makes it even better. And that is my first 10 picks for Evelyn. Hopefully that helps you focus in on a strategy to uh, build a, a great deck in these colors. And also fun fact, uh, I was asked this before, you do, could, you do not have to make it a three color deck. This could be mono black if you wanted it to be. But there's so many good toys to play with in red and blue that why not? You may as well play with all of those colors. So I hope you all enjoyed that. I uh, hope you had gotten some great insight and I'd love to see what your uh, finished Evelyn builds look like. Uh, be sure to post some of your uh, first picks in the comments below or maybe even some full deck lists. And we will see you all again next time. Bye for now.